guys. Today I want to do a pump down test and uh, if everything works smoothly, I'm going to lock it off. I want to clean my evaporator coil tomorrow and tonight I want to see if I can pump all the Freon down into my uh, condenser unit outside. Hopefully so. It's not too old so I think the compressor can handle it. In lines it's pretty short and uh, I shouldn't have any problems. So that's my goal for today. I've already used uh, my wrench to uh, loosen stuff up. So I'm gonna take the caps off of these real quick. You see the breaker box behind me is open. I've already pulled the safety disconnect. So the unit is actually on. High side, make sure it's on nice and tight. I love it. Okay, that is all locked off tight. Now, I'm going to go ahead and lock off the high side. I will admonish you guys, if you haven't run across this before, it's been a while since I've mentioned it. When you lock stuff off, uh, that's great, but if you back it back out, make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that you see the O-rings in these things. If there's a steel O-ring, uh, look at the different models. Some of these this is not obvious or it's missing, you can back these out too far and it'll shoot like a rocket and you will dump every ounce of Freon <laughs> out in the sky. I've had that happen before. Um, most people have, I suppose, at some point. Another, if you're unlucky. Uh, and it is not a pleasant feeling. All right, so now I'm going to shove the disconnect in. And we will pop it down and see if we can pull it into a vacuum. If it pulls into a vacuum nicely, then uh, I will go ahead and lock off the suction side. Right now we have a high side shut off, so it's pulling everything through the suction line. And uh, you can watch the gauges are dropping. It's pulling it all in the system here. If it pulls everything down into a vacuum, I can lock off the suction side as well, trap everything in here, then I'll pull the disconnect. So far it's looking good, so I'm going to go ahead and prep this up. There we go, get it in there a little bit. You hear the compressor getting a little pissy, but it's still doing pretty good. Alright, my high side gauge is uh, well below, and uh, here we go. And I'm pulling the suction side over here. So let's go ahead and lock this off. Negative eight, negative nine, and close to ten. So there we go. Finally. All right. Now pull our disconnect again. Beautiful. And. Uh, the top and the bottom are locked off. Still sucked into a vacuum. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put the caps back on these. Snug, not super tight, just snug and, and then uh, pull our gauges here and get ready for tomorrow. So this way tomorrow I don't have to fool around with, uh, with any of this. It'll already be ready to go. I can just start uh, doing my cuts inside to pull the coil. And I'm going to tighten this down. Now I'll come out here in the morning just to be sure that my valve hasn't, uh, I mean the uh, <coughs> these valves haven't leaked on any and seeped back into the system. Make sure we're still really in a a beautiful vacuum, but for now, that's down tight, and we'll go uh, do our prep and set up inside. All right, I have the cover case off in top and bottom, so we can kind of see everything. And uh, I'll start at the top and work my way down. You can see that uh, down here we have some water laying in here, so it's been leaking out from somewhere. I'm not sure if it's leaking off the sides, if it's been dripping off, but let me get my light a little bit closer up in here. You can see how dirty it is, but uh, the coil itself, I mean, look at the 
the coil there. The coil looks a little tore up too, and I'm not quite sure about that because I certainly didn't do it. So I'm not sure if it's tore up or or something's eating on it or what. But you, down the base you can see more crud piled up in it. And uh, around front here, I've cleaned the tray out a little bit before, but golly, the stuff piles up. And then the drain line comes down here. I have uh, some vinyl clear PVC, which I'm rather fond of using. I use this uh, when I go back and replace, uh, uh, instead of using hard PVC when I blow out drain lines. Anyway, um, down here you'll notice there's uh, a lot of surface rust. Uh, start up here, you can see, uh, see what's happened is uh, the water is either leaked through underneath or it's dripping straight off from underneath the coil. I'm guessing that we might have a problem underneath the coil with uh, the water dripping straight down. Now, I don't really see a bunch of crud underneath. Looking up, uh, the underside of the coil doesn't look that bad. But uh, that is part of our problem, is we have water dripping and we're asleep at night, and you can hear it. So I'm thinking that uh, we have enough crud building up on the coil that not all the water is draining down sideways as it should and into the tray but some of it's dripping straight down and uh, dripping down on here dripping down on the sides down here and splashing and, uh, and eventually getting down on the floor which is not good uh, and not into the heat kit either so <laughs> that's bad juju and tomorrow we're going to come in here and uh, pull the UV light first thing get it out of the way and pull all of the the wrapping off of the copper pipe and I'm not going to use the fittings that are on there I'm not going to loosen them up I'm actually going to, going to pick the spot that I want to uh, cut and I'm going to cut on both of those I'm going to sand it first so I don't have to fool with it later uh, other than maybe a touch up and then I'll pick my spots where I can cut it and weld it and we don't have to worry about fooling with these uh, breaking them loose and putting them back and having them leak later uh, I don't want to I don't want to screw with that uh, so we get that done. Once those are cut, sanded, and cut out of the way, I will come down here. We'll loosen up the drain line and break it free. And at that point, we will pick it up and rock it sideways and break it all loose off of the fitting there. And then I'll put some metal foil tape over the top and bottoms of the the pipe so we don't get any moisture or dirt or anything like that inside of it. Uh, of course, all this is after I've cut the power down here and I have the breaker box. Uh, directly behind me over here so we'll make sure the power is cut there to the heat and the cool as well uh, not that it's going to be an issue because my hands will be staying up there other than pulling the light so that's where we're at we're gonna do that and possibly make a plenum for the thing that is our number one problem is uh, how you see it now is how they put it together <laughs> just like this it had filters on it, but it had a filter on each side, one on that side, one on that side, but not filter filters. It had those little cheesy foam junk filters that you just wash out, laid straight on them. Instead of spending the extra however much it is for the, the filter square filter base box that uh, you put down and you slide the coil in and seal it all up and the filter just slides in the top and you pull the one single filter out and change it like they should have done. So that's why we have all the buildup and all this other problem that's just compounded over time is because uh, uh, whatever company installed this stuff uh, cheaped out originally and didn't do it the right way. Uh, and that's my opinion, but uh, um, as you can see, uh, foam filters or good filters it didn't make a difference because it wasn't designed right. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't use all of the products that the manufacturer gave them uh, all the proper tools to do the job. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is clean these up a little bit. Some of the crud off of them. Got a bunch of buildup and dust and dirt and you get a torch in here on the stuff and you know, it's gonna be all kinds of fun. So best just go ahead and knock it out ahead of time. So I'll probably do a cut down here and we'll do a cut up here kind of high so I can get to it. Uh, kind of keep it away from the fitting a little bit. And I'll wrap the fitting down here with a wet rag 
and I'll cut here and uh, try to put a wet rag down here and and something up high, up high too. So we can go ahead and, and unplug the uh, power cord to that and uh, we'll go ahead and pull the UV lamp. Screw that on that. that. All right, let's see. Oh, toasty. All right. On. So that is beautiful. Oh, it looks like it might be fried too. I'm going to toast it the top and bottom. And I don't remember seeing it on a while ago when I was looking inside actually. So I might have to apply some juice to it later and have a look see at it. But as you can see, it's kind of it's some build up on it. All the all the stuff that's starting to pile up on it. So that can't uh, that can't be good either. All right, I'm gonna sand this down a little bit. I'm gonna work down in this area here, probably in the middle. So we'll just kind of this is like emery cloth, I guess, what they call it. It's kind of a porous type material. I really like it a lot better than regular sandpaper. All right, pretty. You now the only fun we'll probably have is uh, the spacing between the pipes here and here. Cutting this one. I got a small one for that, but I might have to use a ratcheting one for this one. We shall see. Let me get uh, some toys out. Hey gang. All right, the next day has rolled around. My brother's here and we're going to work on cleaning the evaporator coil today. We have a number of things laid out and I have several different uh, pipe cutters. Now you'll see I have a small one on here and I pulled it just far enough away that that it'll clear fine but that's not going to work so good on the larger one because the uh, oh the medium sized one that I have here can clamp around it but I'm still going to be hitting the pipe but I have one that you may or may not have seen and it's like a ratcheting pipe cutter so it uh, it spins around like a ratchet, and it's kind of interesting. And I'm going to start with the smaller one. Um, we already have the system pump down outside from yesterday, and everything looks good. With that it held uh, held fine. So I'll do a couple rounds on it, and after a couple rounds, I'll do like an eighth of a turn just to tighten it up. You don't want to tighten it up too much at a time or you put bends in it and uh, cause issues. You have to watch them sometimes because the, the blade will like to walk out of the groove. So you hear it hissing. That's the uh, vacuum I had on it. Now this one's a little different. I'm going to ratchet this one here. And uh, see this just a little bit here. It's been a while since I used this one, so hopefully it'll behave. I can't remember where I bought this one, but you can find them all over the internet. It's really handy for tight spots. It is. It is very handy for tight spots. You get busy during the summer, you actually. That's why I have so many cutters. You don't bother changing blades or buying blades. You just stop the store and buy a new cutter. <laughs> Sad but true. Alright. And it sounded like it popped through. And there we go. It looks like it did. Alright, so let's walk it around. And we'll loosen it up here. That's that. So we have a loose pipe here and a loose pipe here. And now we will come down here and. Uh, take the piping down here, Luke. All right, I'm going to get a screwdriver. And they don't want to come loose. Ah, there we go. So, you can see it's clear a little bit in there, and I'll wash this PVC out when we get the coil lifted out here a little bit. All right, so that is that. 